Hi, it's Julian Mella from PopperGolfing.com. In this video, I'm going to show you five different things to practice that will seriously help improve your golf game and lower your scores. They're really easy to do, and they're not about complicated swing thoughts or swing changes. It's things that we do every day when we're playing golf that needs a little bit of dedicated practice, but once you get this right, it's a serious game changer. So the first thing I want you to start practicing are putts of three foot and under. They sound really easy to do, but under pressure, those are the putts that we tend to miss. And that's where we'll keep the scores a little bit higher and maybe not beat our playing partners. So the way that I like to do it is put them round in a, like a semicircle, uh, three foot and getting slightly closer to the hole. And don't leave the putting green until you've made all of them. And then the idea is, is to repeat that from different directions so that you're getting putts of uphill, downhill, sideways from, from left to right putts and right to left putts. So really easy to do, really easy to practice. All it takes is five to 10 minutes uh, before you go out and play because if you can knock all of those putts in, your confidence goes through the roof and then you're not worried whether your playing partner gives you them or not. So go and practice those short putts to start off with. So the next thing you need to be practicing is a reliable chipping action. We get faced with those shots around the green and if we can, can, uh, can be confident over those, make sure that we're chipping them onto the green every time relatively close to the fag and remember if we can hold those three foot putts and under, if we're chipping within three foot we're now going to be starting to get up and down from the edge of the green rather than struggling to get up and down. So choose a really reliable action be it a putting style or a chipping style maybe use a club that you're really confident with i like to change my clubs but keep a similar technique so if i want a club uh, a shot to play short i might use more loft if i want the ball to roll a bit further i'll use less loft even down to a hybrid type club but get a really really reliable chipping action because it'll pay dividends it takes the pressure off your putting it takes the pressure off your, your approach shots so just before I show you the next bit, if you're struggling with your golf game, if you've got too many swing thoughts, if you're on YouTube searching for the secret, you're feeling frustrated, stop right now. Get signed up to propergolfing.com. On there, as soon as you join, you'll get instant access to hundreds of videos in the library section. You'll also get coaching from myself every month, as well as a weekly Zoom in, uh, invite where we have members from all over the world come and join. They're great fun, they're very informative, and not to be missed. So if you are serious about your golf game and you want to improve it, get signed up to propergolfing.com. So the third thing that I'd like you to concentrate on uh, or be aware of is your attitude. What's your attitude like when you're playing golf? Do you get angry? Do you get frustrated? Do you throw your clubs? Do you, do you let playing partners upset you? If you're letting these things happen, it's gonna have a physical effect on your golf game. So first off, there'll be a mental tension that creeps in, a frustration, that will then relate to a physical tension. So you'll start holding the club tighter. And when you hold that club tighter, you'll never make your best golf swings. So a great attitude on a golf course is to let it go. If we hit a bad shot, so what? What does it matter? We're all going to hit bad shots. The best players in the world hit bad shots. It's how you cope with it. Can you remember when Tiger Woods had that 10 on the 12th at Augusta? And then he went on and birded most of the last holes. So a great attitude on a golf course will save hundreds of shots over the course of a year. So be aware of your attitude and if it's poor, do something about it. Part of the swing that's seriously overlooked is holding your finish. Now the value of holding your finish for at least two seconds is incredible. Um, if you're swinging poorly, you're not able to hold your finish. And yet the best golf shots you've ever hit, I'll bet you any money you've been able to admire them. So never underestimate the value of holding that beautiful finish in a golf swing. It's going to make sure that you're turning properly, it's going to make sure that you're transferring your weight, it's going to make sure that you're looking towards your target and chances are you're going to hit longer and straighter golf shots. Now the final thing for you to go and practice are uneven lies. How often do we go to a range where we've got a perfect lie, off a mat probably, and yet when we get onto the golf course we're faced with uneven lies on probably most of the holes and yet you never go and practice them. Top players will go and practice these every week, and yet amateurs very rarely go and practice uneven lies. It's not easy to do if you haven't got the facility to do it, but if you can get on the golf course, do a little bit of practice, put yourself on those awkward lies, it'll make a massive difference to your scoring. 
Now I hope you found these five simple things really interesting. They're very easy to do, everybody can go out and practice them and I guarantee everybody will start to improve their game, shoot lower scores if they dedicate some time to it. So I hope, you've, hope this has helped and thanks for watching. Take care guys, bye.